Volcano Rising Scientists have located the magma source of an Italian supervolcano that's considered one of the most dangerous in the world. Campi Flegre is a volcanic caldera to the west of Naples, which last erupted in 1538, but was responsible for a series of small earthquakes in the 1980s. Researchers who have long puzzled about where the caldera's magma is coming from have now pinpointed the location of a hot zone about four kilometers under the nearby city of Pozzoli. From 1982 and 1984, rising gas and magma caused the ground in the crater to swell, but was prevented from rising to the surface by a deep rock formation. The magma instead spread out laterally, causing minor earthquakes. The caldera has grown hotter since, and with pressure building, scientists fear it could soon erupt and put the entire region at risk. Volcanologists cannot say for sure what the scale of any future eruption could be, but are closely monitoring Campi Flegri. It's gonna blow! If Yellowstone blows, it's goodnight Vienna. A volcanic eruption at Yellowstone National Park would be an American natural disaster on a scale that the country has never seen. The event would potentially see millions of casualties and wipe out the West Coast, with its ash fall stretching far beyond U.S. borders. This would cause a volcanic winter, during which widespread starvation would be a threat. According to UN estimates, global food reserves could last only 74 days. Fortunately, the actual chances of that happening are 1 in 730,000, and America's top brains are on the case to stop it from even happening. To preempt such a catastrophe, NASA has developed a plan to drill underneath Yellowstone and pump its magma chamber full of water, extracting the heat. Cooling the magma rock would occur at a rate of one meter per year, meaning it could take thousands of years to eliminate the risk of eruption. The cost of NASA's plan is estimated to be 3.5 billion US dollars. However, the space agency expects the clean energy derived from heat extraction would offset this via lower power costs and the creation of geothermal plants. This plan only covers Yellowstone. It doesn't include the other half dozen supervolcanoes in the USA or the 20 others elsewhere on the planet. But experts say they rarely blow and Yellowstone only erupts every 600,000 years. And when was the last time it blew? Around 600,000 years ago, give or take a few millennia. Sometimes your only option is to run. When a volcano erupts big time, it spits out a fast-moving and incredibly destructive mass of material known as a pyroclastic flow. And according to the United States Geological Survey, if you ever find yourself in the path of one, you should run in the opposite direction and run fast. Pyroclastic flows are made up of a basal flow of volcanic ash, lava, rock, and gases, which move beneath a cloud of ash. Their temperatures can exceed 1,000 degrees Celsius, and they can move at 700 kilometers per hour. Typically, pyroclastic flows move downslope, but they can go uphill when the ratio of gas to ash is higher. This is known as a pyroclastic surge. These dense pyroclastic surges can even move over water. Pyroclastic flows generally destroy everything in their path, including vegetation, buildings, and people. There are generally two kinds of pyroclastic flow. The first type forms when an eruption column cools and the ash becomes too dense to maintain an upward thrust. The second type is rarer and occurs when so much pressure builds up inside a volcano that it erupts laterally and boils over. The last known example of this is when Mount St. Helens in Washington State erupted in 1980. So there you have it. If you ever happen to be near a volcano when it blows its top, now you know what to do. Alaska's most active volcano looks poised to erupt. Experts warn that one of Alaska's most active volcanoes will be erupting soon. Warnings have been issued by the Alaska Volcano Observatory, an organization formed to study and monitor volcanic activity in the state. The Alaska Volcano Observatory has increased the alert level of Alaska's most active volcano, the Pavlov Volcano. The volcano erupted earlier this year, triggering a red alert, the highest of four levels. The latest Pavlov eruption in March sent an ash cloud as high as 37,000 feet into the atmosphere, covering villages and producing volcanic mud and lava flows. Eruptions of this degree cause issues for jet-powered airplanes. Volcanic ash clouds consist of small tephra, which are bits of pulverized rock and glass. These are only distinguishable from regular clouds via satellites in space. 
When these rocks and glass are sucked into an airplane's jet engines, they melt and coagulate, fusing the blades and other parts of the turbine, thereby causing engine failure. The eruption was the first for Pavlov since November 2014, and noted by the AVO as the most energetic since 1996. Pavlov is one of the most consistently active volcanoes in the Aleutian Arc. It has erupted six times since 1996, and 21 times in the past 50 years. Alaskan volcano eruption could mean trouble for planes in the air. The Alaska Volcano Observatory sent out a warning to all aircraft following an eruption at the Bogoslav Volcano, the latest in a series of eruptions that first began in December 2016. Airlines were placed on high alert on Saturday after Alaska's Bogoslav Volcano erupted at 10.15 a.m., spewing a cloud of ash more than 30,000 feet into the air over the Aleutian Islands. Once ash enters an aircraft engine, glass in the ash melts as it passes through the plane's combustion chamber, which operates at temperatures as high as 1,500 degrees Celsius. The molten glass particles then stick to the turbine blades and bring them to a standstill. This can cause the engines to stall. The particles in the ash can also block the pitot tubes, which act as airspeed sensors. The blockage would give the aircraft false airspeed readings, which could be overlooked by the pilots. A red alert was downgraded to orange on Sunday after no further ash emissions occurred.